Welcome back. So far we have understood what BSM is and how it can help us. Then we understood the necessity of a value stream manager and selecting a product family for making a value stream map. In this lesson, I will show you how to create a value stream map for your current state. We are going to use a set of symbols or icons to represent processes and flow. Though it is not mandatory to follow the same symbols, it is recommended to use them so that your value stream map can be easily understood even by the people outside your organization. Now before we begin, let's go through a few mapping tips that will help you map your process sequence accurately. Number one, always map the value stream by yourself. Do not rely on the standard time of the process and study the actual time yourself. Take a paper and pencil and draw the map on the spot because you may miss some details if you wait to go back to your computer to draw the map. Number two, start with a quick walk from incoming material to dispatch to get a quick idea of the flow and process sequence. And number three, now you can begin from the dispatch area and start to map upstream. In this way, you can begin with the process that is linked directly to the customers. Okay, let's start. For example purpose, we will map the ABC organization that is producing components for the automobile industry. We have selected a product family of bracket assemblies that has two models, left hand and right hand. Now again, in lean thinking, we always work on the product value as perceived by the end customer. So our mapping begins with customer requirement. We will represent the customer's assembly plant with a factory icon. Underneath the icon, we will draw a data box with the customer specific requirement. Let us say the customer operates on two shifts and he needs 12,000 LH bracket assembly and 6,400 RH bracket assemblies per month. He needs daily shipment in the bins and each bin is having 20 bracket assemblies. Next, we will draw basic production processes using a process box. Now making one process box for every single process step will make the map enormously huge. So we are going to use the process box to indicate one or more processes where there is a continuous flow of material. And the process box stops wherever the processes are disconnected and the material flow stops. For example, an assembly process with several connected workstations like in a single piece flow or even if there is some WIP in between the stations but the material is flowing continuously, it would be drawn as a single process box. But if one assembly process is disconnected from the next assembly process downstream and there is inventory accumulating and being moved in batches in between them, then individual process boxes will be used. Again, if there is a machining line of let us say 10 sequential machining operations such as drilling, tapping, etc. and they are connected by a transfer line, kind of a single piece flow, it can be mapped as a single process box. But if there are separate machining sections or areas like drilling shop, tapping shop, with inventory being moved in batches, then each shop will get its own process box. Right? So in ABC, we have identified these six processes. And now let's add this symbol to note down the number of operators working in the process step. Now perhaps in your organization, many value streams have multiple flows that merge together. In that case, you may have to draw like this. But again, do not overdo it. Take only those streams where the lead time is more. And that is why it was recommended to have a quick walk before you start the map. Okay, back to our original map. Now we will fill some of the necessary information in the data box under each processing step like cycle time, the changeover time to switch from producing one product type to another, and the available work time per shift. We can also add EPE, which stands for every part every some time, which is a measure of production batch size. For example, if you produce five different parts, and once produced, the next term for that particular part comes after 10 days, then your EPE is 10 days. Now that also means that you need to have at least 10 days of inventory for that part. Okay, next. Once we have plotted these process steps, we will plot the inventory accumulating between them. Now this is an important point because it tells you where the flow is stopping. 
so we use a warning triangle icon to capture the location and amount of inventory. This amount could be in the quantity of parts or number of days. Then we will plot our raw material supplier with another factory icon and we will use the same truck icon and broad arrow to show the movement of material from the supplier to our factory. This supplier delivers steel in 200 meter coil. In another words, he cannot deliver less than 200 meter, which is much more than our daily production capacity. So we receive only two shipments per week from this supplier. Do not map every child part. Just consider one or two main raw materials having the highest lead time. So these are the main segments. But how does these individual processes know how much to make and when to make? Let us add the information flow in this map. To start with, add a process box for our production planning department which uses ERP for the shop floor scheduling. Now this department is responsible for receiving and giving information in our organization. We normally plot information received electronically with this lightning arrow symbol and the information flow using paper or hard copies with a normal straight arrow. The planning department then consolidates and processes this information and then sends specific schedule to each manufacturing process about what is to be produced and when. Similarly, the production planning department sends a six week forecast and a weekly schedule to the raw material supplier. And as you have figured out that in ABC Private Limited, the processes are producing based on schedule and not on the actual requirement of the next process. This is the push type of production, which we can draw by using a striped arrow mark. In this situation, the supplying process will tend to make parts that their customer processes don't need and those parts are pushed into storage. So these processes are working as isolated islands. Finally, the moment of truth. Now we will plot the timeline at the bottom of the map using an up down line. The up section of this line will fall under the inventory and the down section of this line will fall under the process box. Now we will write down the lead time in days on the up section. You can calculate the lead time by dividing the inventory quantity by the daily customer requirement. Similarly, now write down the cycle time in the down section of the timeline for each process. Now in the right bottom, add up the total inventory time which will give you an estimate of your lead time. And then add up the cycle time which will give you an estimate of the total value addition time. Surprise! In the ABC organization, the total processing time required to make one piece is only 185 seconds. Whereas that piece takes more than 21 days to make its way through the plant. This is your current state. And the best part is now you understand why improving cycle time hardly helps in improving the lead time of the product. Making this VSM is only the first step. The actual work begins now. In the coming lessons, we will go through a few lean practices and understand how can we improve our lead time and move to a better future state. See you there.